Hello, my name is Rans Migrod, and I will be talking about work with Tim Vieira and Ryan Carroll about sampling dependency trees in non-projective graph-based dependency parsing. First, a quick overview of graph-based dependency parsing. Dependency parsing is a task of predicting syntactic structure for a sentence, and graph-based dependency parsers work by converting a sentence into a typically dense graph where nodes are words and edges are possible dependency relations. We also add a root node to the sentence to mark the syntactic root of the dependency tree. We then compute the weight for all edges in the form of an adjacency matrix, matrix using a learned model such as a neural network. Normally, we then decode using the Chu Liu Edmonds algorithm to find the maximum weighted di directed spanning tree. We've previously discussed decoding algorithms for this setting, and you can find our paper on this using the following QR code. In this talk, we will instead look at how we can sample a directed spanning tree from the distribution of the graph. One important subtlety to most dependency parsing annotation schemes is that a root constraint must be met. The universal dependency guidelines state that there should be just one node with the root dependency relation in every tree. Therefore, a dependency tree like this one is not a valid dependency tree, as it has two outgoing edges from the root. Meanwhile, this tree has only one edge emanating from the root, and so is a valid dependency tree. In this paper, we modify two existing sampling algorithms, Wilson's algorithm and Colburn's algorithm, to respect the root constraint. A tree emoji will be used throughout the presentation to indicate novel contributions we made to these algorithms. We will also give the first sampling without replacement algorithm for dependency trees. We begin with a description of Wilson's algorithm. The key idea of this algorithm is to sample a tree by taking random walks in the graph like a Markov chain. But how do we turn a random walk into a tree? We start a walk from a node that is not currently in the tree until we encounter a node that is in the tree. Importantly, whenever we see a cycle in our random walk, we simply ignore it. These random uh, walks are known as loop erased random walks, and let us consider consider so only the probability of the loop erased walk rather than the full random walk. The loop erased walk is in a path of edges in our tree. The running time of this algorithm is the mean hitting time of the random walk graph. If we let pi be the stationary distribution of the Markov chain behind the random walk and h of ij be the expected number of steps in the random walk uh, from node i to node j, then the mean hitting time of the graph is given by the following formula. We will later see how the hitting time of a random graph scales with the size of the graph in our runtime experiments. Let's go over an example of Wilson's algorithm. We will use the following graph with four non-root nodes. We initialize our tree to be the root and start a random walk from node one. At each time step, we sample a parent for the current node. And now suppose that we get a cycle. We just continue sampling and forget about the cycle we've made. We have now connected node 1 to our tree, so we move on to the next node not on the tree, which is node 2. And we keep going until all edges have been connected to the tree, ignoring cycles that we encounter. However, as we can see, this tree we have sampled contains multiple edges emanating from the root. We can solve this problem by simple modification to take a first step that samples uh, the edge emanating from the root. So if we consider all edges emanating from the root, we can randomly sample one. In this case, we'll pick the edge from the root to node one. We can then run the algorithm as before, with the exception that we ignore the outgoing edges from the root and get a tree with only one edge emanating from the root. We provide proof that these trees are sampled from the correct distribution in our paper, but, leave, but we did not discuss this in this talk. Now we're going to move on to Col Colburn's algorithm. Colburn's algorithm is a textbook exact sampling algorithm, also known as an ancestral sampling algorithm. It works by sampling incoming edges to each non-root node of the graph using the marginal probability of the edge given the previously sampled edges. We will only give the gist of the algorithm here, but we are able to compute these probabilities by using the matrix tree theorem, which lets us find these values using a matrix inverse of the Laplacian matrix of the graph.
who et al. gave a modification to the Laplacian matrix in order to enforce the root constraint, which we directly borrow here. We once again look at an example. We first sample an incoming edge to node 1. We then proceed to sample the incoming edge for the next node. In this case, as we are using et al. Laplacian, the edge from root to node 2 will have zero probability, and, and so we will never choose it. Similarly, when we want to sample an edge into node 3, we will have zero probability for the edge root to node 3. We will also have zero probability for the edge 2 to 3, as this would lead to a cycle which is not allowed in the tree. When we sample an incoming edge to node 4, we can only ever select the edge from 1 to 4, as the others would either violate the root constraint or lead to a cycle. We have to perform n edge sampling operations. Naively, recomputing the marginals at each time step requires a matrix inverse to be performed n times. This leads to a total runtime of big O of n to the 4. Colburn's algorithm improves on this by utilizing the Sherman Morrison formula, which is a linear algebra trick used in many algorithms that can update the inverse matrix of any rank 1 update in quadratic time. It turns out that we can condition the graph and its Laplacian matrix using a column replacement, which is a rank 1 update. And so we can do each sampling step in n squared time, leading to a cubic time sampling algorithm. We briefly compared the runtime of Wilson's and Colbert's algorithm using uniformly, uniformly randomly generated directed graphs. As expected, Wilson's algorithm is faster than Colbert's algorithm, though we see that the slope of Colbert's algorithm is 1.4, which, which suggests it performs much better than its asymptotic runtime, which would have a slope of 3. We lastly would like to mention our novel sampling without replacement algorithm. Sampling without replacement means that we will never resample the same tree from a graph. This may be useful if the distribution of trees is skewed, so we are likely to repeat trees. This will be the case for most trained models. We were able to add extra bookkeeping to Colbert's algorithm that maintains and updates different components of the marginal probabilities that allow us to correctly and efficiently update the marginal probabilities to take into account previously sampled trees. We require an additional big O of K work per sampling operations where K is the number of previously sampled trees. This means that to sample K trees, we require big O of N cubed times K plus N squared times K squared time. We provide the details and proofs of this algorithm in our paper. In this talk, we extended two sampling algorithms for dependency trees to enforce the root constraint which is needed for many dependency schemes such as the universal dependency scheme. While Colburn's algorithm is a bit slower than Wilson's algorithm, we are able to adapt it to efficiently sample without replacement. This generally reduces the number of samples needed to approximate the distribution over trees, and there are no repeated samples. Thank you very much for listening. Our paper and code can be found using either the QR codes or the links uh, on this slide.